Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge, where many of you come to get your daily dose of satisfaction. In this episode, there's two stories. The first is how some students got revenge on a school dorm monitor, and the revenge is so well done. The second story is a revenge on a lady who demanded English to be spoken around her. I hope you stay for the stories today and subscribe for future videos. This story is titled Car in a Block of Ice. For various reasons, I went to a boarding school in Pennsylvania for sophomore through senior year of high school. Nothing criminal, just mental health issues and learning disabilities that the regular school was not equipped to handle at the time. One of the dorm monitor guys was a royal ass. Any day he was on duty was a nightmare. He would always stick you with on campus only, aka grounded for the littlest thing, and complaining about it got you in sight, which means you have to be visible, can't hide in your room or even do homework, until bedtime. Typical I'm in charge bullying bullshit. One year, he got bad news right after he got back from Thanksgiving. A family member on the other side of the country was in bad shape and having health problems, so he had to go take care of them. He lived in a crappy neighborhood and didn't trust his car to be in one piece when he got back, so he asked the school administrators if he could leave his car at the school while he was away for about six weeks. They let him, the only stipulation being that he had to leave keys with maintenance so they could move the car if the parking area needed plowing. He parked his car on the grass around the side of our dorm the second week of December and left. He didn't leave his keys. This will be important to the story. He didn't get back until the end of January. So, we decided to get revenge on him. Because the dorm was full of teenagers, the water spigots didn't have regular handles on them. Instead, they used a strange square key that was kept in the office and was only used with permission. However, a pair of flat-ended pliers worked well to turn the water on. We hid a hose in the bedroom closest to the car, which was also right next to a spigot. The kid who was supposed to be in that room slept elsewhere, so he wouldn't get woken up by someone coming into the room every 20 to 30 minutes, unrolling the hose, hooking it up, turning on the water, giving the car a misting, and then rolling up the hose again. Every day, from sun up to sun down, that car got misted. We even got help from other kids in our classes who lived close enough to bike over during Christmas vacation. One even showed up with a lawn chair and a book so he could stay there and missed it again as soon as the last layer had frozen over. No staff was in any of the school buildings during Christmas vacations, so he didn't get caught. In the middle of the night two days after we got back from Christmas vacation, I was one of the two people on duty with the hose when the monitor for that night comes outside for a cigarette. He sees me with pliers in my hands and asks, Did you forget something? And holds out the water spigot key. That's when we realized just how much Ass was disliked. Then he offered to help ice the car as well. By the time Ass got back, his car was encased in a block of ice. It had to be at least a few inches thick. When he complained to the administrators, they told him that because he hadn't dropped off the keys, everyone had assumed that he changed his mind about leaving the car there and was gonna move it later. When he went to get his car out of the ice, he couldn't just attack it with a hammer. Doing so would break every window and destroy the paint job. The only way to get rid of the ice was the same way it went on, slowly, in 20 below zero weather. He tried using a small blowtorch, but that didn't work because he got too impatient and tried to put the torch against the ice, which kept putting it out. He got the smart idea of hooking the hose to the dorm's water heater, but the weather was too cold and I'm pretty sure he just added a few layers of ice around his car. After we saw what he was trying to do, all the hoses on the campus miraculously disappeared. He ended up running back and forth with a couple of tea kettles, melting the channels so he could chisel out the ice between them. We kept turning the burner off when he left the kitchen. He quit working for the school at the end of June. Revenge is a dish, best served cold. In this case, served as a car in a giant ice cube. Be nice, or your car will be ice. <laughs> this story's titled, This is America, We Speak English Here. I just discovered this sub, so I hope my story fits here. This story begins when I was a freshman in high school. After school on most weekdays, I would walk to my uncle's house to babysit my little cousin. 
My cousin was about 2 or 3 years old and liked to go to the public park that was directly in front of my uncle's house. It was a simple park, about the size of a football field with a playground in one corner and the rest all being grass. One particular day, my cousin's begging me to go to the park, so I take him. For a while, we were the only ones there. My cousin was too scared to go down the slide from the top by himself, so I was picking him up and letting him slide about halfway. He was having a great time and laughing. Soon, a lady comes up with her daughter, and they start playing on the swing set. Well, the lady was sitting on the bench, and her daughter was trying to play on the swing set. Now here's an important part to the story. When I speak with my little cousin, I speak in our native language. He can understand English, but I'm just so used to talking my native language with my family that it just happens naturally. So I'm talking to my cousin, trying to encourage him to go to the top of the slide, and he's on his way up, psyching himself up. Then I hear the lady yell out, Hey, you need to speak English. I said, Huh? I'm just telling him to... She cut me off and said, This is America. We speak English here. Me, lying, said, uh, I'm just trying to play with my cousin, he doesn't speak English too well. The lady then responds, I don't care, you speak English around us, we don't know what you're planning. Planning? Do you think we're gonna rob you or something? So, I'm pissed off, I'm just here with a child, and he was visibly having an awesome time playing at the playground, there was no reason for this lady to impose her bullshit on me. So I decide, fuck it, if she wants me to speak English, here, have it. I said to my cousin, hey, let's ignore this dumb bitch. And I continue to speak in my native language to him and tell him to slide down. The lady said, what? Did you just call me? Oh, I called you a bitch because that's what you're being. She then said, oh my god, I'm calling my husband and he's gonna kick your ass. At this point, I feel the need to try to get out of there, so I start telling my cousin let's go. While I'm trying to leave, she keeps yelling and screaming at me about how her husband's on his way and he's gonna kick my ass, blah blah blah, and even says she's gonna call the cops because she thinks I'm a creepy pedo with some random kid. Anyway, I leave and get home. I was paranoid for a few weeks after that incident, thinking the cops were gonna want to talk to me or something, so I avoided the park for a while. So, let me get to the revenge part of the story. Now we're in the present, and it's been over 10 years. I've graduated high school and got a job at this plant. The thing about this plant is that it's one of the few places in my city that pays well over minimum wage. A lot of people in my city try super hard to get into the plant, but few do. Most people end up moving out of my city, or commuting over an hour where the good jobs are at. Another important note is I'm not trying to brag or anything, but through a series of promotions, and I, being at the right place at the right time when certain people retired, I ended up being number two at the plant. I have a really good plant manager who has a lot of faith in me, and he's taken me under his wing. So one of my job responsibilities is hiring people and making sure they get trained properly. A couple of weeks ago, we had to let go of one of our office ladies because reasons. So I called up the placement agency we use and let them know that I need an office administrator type person on Monday. So Monday comes around, and who shows up? You guessed it, it's the lady from the park. She, for whatever reason, doesn't recognize me, but be assured, I recognize her. Her face is ingrained into my brain. I go through the typical introductions and pass her off to HR for a bit to make sure she fills out some paperwork. After all that, I give her the tour of the plant, I pass her off to the ladies in the office and let them start training her. That's most of my interaction with her. I'd pop by the office during the week to see how she was doing and get updates on her performance. I start to think what I'm gonna do. Do I want to keep this lady on staff? Is it even worth taking any revenge? If yes, what should I do? I finally made my decision on Thursday. Through my conversations with her, I found out that she's wanted to get into this plant for a long time. It was like a dream job for her. I decided that I'm gonna lead her on and make it seem like she's gonna be staying with the company and then let her go unexpectedly. So on Thursday, I set up an appointment with her to finish up some training. In the training, I get to talk to her a little more and ask if she's been living in the city for a while. She says yes, and I ask her what part. She mentions she lives near a park by my uncle's house. I let her know, oh, I used to go to that park all the time. 
I used to take my little cousin, but I stopped going because I ran into this racist lady one day who threatened to have her husband beat me up because she wanted me to speak English. Her face changed. It went from kinda happy to straight ghost. I think it finally clicked in her head. I concluded the training and didn't say anything else. Friday came and she showed up to work. When she went to lunch, I called the placement agency and told them to call her and let her know not to show up after lunch, that we won't be needing her anymore. I could do this because she wasn't actually an employee, we just had a contract through the hiring agency and we didn't need a valid reason to let her go. There was also just something very satisfying about firing someone while they're on lunch. So that's the story so far. I'm sure the office ladies aren't too happy with me because they're gonna have to retrain a new person starting Monday, but it'll be okay. Ah, a sweet revenge that happens 10 years after the initial incident. It seems like the universe really wanted OP to get back at this lady somehow. My favorite part of the story was when she called her husband to come kick OP's ass in front of some kids. I really hope she was kidding. What a way to end the stories. I hope you enjoyed them today. If you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future stories. See you guys in the next one.